These are these are unprecedented times. These are extremely tough times, uh, difficult times. Uh, we had a morning address from our honorable prime minister, and we are uh, uh, he's uh, he's requested us to or advised us to um, stay back for another two weeks. Uh, um, and in these times, uh, you know, uh, businesses are experiencing uh, a great amount of turmoil uh, and. Uh, um, you know, at entrepreneur, we've taken this and seek advice from uh, stalwarts like uh, uh, Mr. Sunal Dabral and a uh, great, uh, great panelists who are joining us in the next panel. Uh, so how are we going to conduct this is uh, we're going to, I'm going to spend the next five to seven minutes as uh, to introduce you what, who we are and what we are trying to do in these times. And then I'm going to uh, request our uh, distinguished guests to uh, you know, uh, share his um, his wisdom with us. Uh, so at Entrepreneur, which is uh, which is a franchise India group company, I, I myself uh, lead uh, franchise India's uh, media and exhibition business. Uh, at uh, uh, at at our group company, we are a community of small businesses, SMEs, entrepreneurs, um, enterprises, and a, a very large number of. Uh, small businesses, uh, Soho businesses, uh, influencers, uh, entrepreneur is a great influencer of influencers, a lot of freelancers. And we experience that they are, they are the most vulnerable lot. They are very badly affected at these times. Uh, and they need, to, they need to survive in these times. And in these times, uh, uh, if they don't seek business out there, if they don't market themselves, uh, it's, it's do or die for them. And at these times, when you go out and seek business, uh, most often than not, you are looked down. You said, you know, there's, there's such a big social issue that you are encountering, um, how, you know, and, and you're going for and seeking business at these times. But let me tell you and uh, share this thought with you, which we firmly believe in these times, is uh, businesses uh, need to survive these situations. And in, in a country like India, uh, seeking help from government uh, is going to be a far-sighted dream, to be very honest. Um, we had some senior um, representative from government, and they have a very big issue to address, and they, they, they need to address a very different segment of society. Uh, so as businesses, what we advise is that businesses help businesses. right? So businesses in these times can come forward and help each other, is what we believe in. At Entrepreneur and Franchise India, we are, uh, we've, we've taken some necessary steps around it. And particularly with Entrepreneur, um, uh, we have uh, what, we've, what we've developed, um, an ECG strategy, which is called um, Engage, Communicate, and Guide. Uh, this is the time uh, when, when marketing needs to, um, you know, uh, capture these three key areas. First, we go and engage. This is very important. Uh, we cannot be as enablers, as business uh, business people, be in silos and not helping our consumers and customers. Uh, uh, so we need to actively engage uh, them. Uh, we need to over communicate at this time. So uh, I, I personally feel that these are these are times when you have to extend an extra hand. You have to go out and and uh, and uh, overcome. Uh, over communicate uh, in these times and most importantly what do you communicate you communicate ideas you communicate you guide them and and i mean i'm personally uh, we've done close to about 150 webinars in last 20 days uh, we never did a webinar ever uh, but these 150 webinars done by teams across across the verticals is something which has which has engaged uh, uh, lacks of people uh, in these webinars and purely uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to sort of create ideas we are cre creating opportunities for people uh, to pivot to 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 survive to thrive in in whatever situation that you are in so i i repeat we've got ecg strategy which is called engage communicate and guide 
um, our customers. We've, we've kind of broad based our customers into four kind of categories. Uh, we, we call um, on the extreme uh, side, we look at deeply impacted category. For example, my business, which is which I, I do a, uh, a large business on events and exhibitions, uh, which is deeply impacted. I mean, we are, we are sitting at virtually 90, 95% of our revenues gone. Uh, uh, we don't uh, see in near future uh, us uh, opening our shows uh, uh, very uh, uh, in an immediate future. So these are deeply impacted businesses, restaurants, uh, uh, you know, hospitality. These are deeply in impacted businesses, travel. Uh, second thing which we are, uh, which is deeply, uh, so there, there's one, one bucket which is deeply impacted businesses. What can you do for them? What can you work around them? Second businesses that we look at is moderately impacted business. businesses, which are in the revenues are down by 50%, right? Uh, these are businesses which are retail businesses. These are, uh, you know, my e-commerce is still doing, but I, I've lost on uh, a lot of opportunity. Retail uh, could be, uh, I mean, more uh, impacted, but uh, certain businesses which could we could uh, which which still uh, uh, continue to sort of operate in a certain certain uh, uh, impact. Uh, there are there are businesses which are little impacted business. About fifty or twenty five percent of businesses down, right? So uh, I'm I'm still I'm an education business. I, I've impact got some impact, but I've not impacted big time, right? But there were businesses which are thriving at these times. You know, they are ad tech businesses. I was a pure play ad tech business is thriving right now. So, so businesses like them need to need to be. So these are four buckets. We've got deeply impacted. We've got moderately impacted. We've got little impact, and we've got thriving business. How are you approaching them? Obviously, you're going to the most of the folks are marketing to thriving businesses, but really. The opportunity, in my view, is equal with deeply impacted businesses. The opportunity is equally with, um, uh, with moderately impacted businesses. How can you go and guide them, help them, and build a, build a great amount of opportunity with them for near future? And these are also times, particularly in B2B marketing, which is very consultative in nature, to build a great amount of thought leadership and, uh, and, and brand equity around uh, those businesses. And in, in some sense, if you really ask me, these are the times which will differentiate between uh, uh, put in grades, um, uh, you know. So, so these are times which would, which would have a very lasting effect on you and your businesses, um, provided you can extend those hands, uh, if you guide your businesses in the right manner. I don't know how many of you have read this nice piece on CNBC, which I, I came across, that Alibaba was built in 2002 crisis and it became a 500 billion uh, opportunity. Why? Because somebody addressed that problem. Somebody, somebody did the right thing. Uh, as we, we represent a very large uh, SMB community and I, I uh, one piece of advice that I can give to them is these are times to look at new segments. Uh, there was never a better option opportunity to look at a better segment, new segments, um, pivot your businesses to a certain extent. For example, one of our businesses that we do is essentially, it's called businessx.com. And we, we were largely concentrating on small businesses and uh, startups. But one of the categories that's recently emerged for us, and it's become very exciting for us, is mentors. Uh, there are a whole bunch of uh, time is available with people and they want to sort of jump onto a consulting or a coaching opportunity. And that business kind of, we pivoted that business 20 years, uh, 20 days back. And we started doing webinars for uh, for mentors. And we built a very large community around there. So how do you pivot? How do you, how do you look at newer opportunities? This is great. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with one of the communication that I came across from Facebook. Uh, uh, wherein they wanted to sort of address a community of journalists. They've got a very large community of journalists and they wanted to extend a hand there, a helping hand there. And they reached out to that community. So how do you, how do you bucket those communities also uh, who could potentially benefit at these time with your guidance, with your help, with your, with your support. And it, it, it necessarily doesn't need to be a monetary support. It could be a guidance. It could be a direction. It could be a extended help that you can do. And these are times which, uh, which would work very well. And how do you use technology at these times? to sort of help uh, B2B engagements uh, would be very exciting. We, uh, we've reached to tier, tier three, tier four, thanks to Zoom and a bunch of other uh, webinar platforms. We are reaching very effectively to a very large community out there uh, in tier two, three, tier two, uh, four time uh, uh, 
uh, four towns, uh, being a very large event company, we do about 600 events uh, uh, annually uh, in about 78 cities. Uh, for us, it was impossible uh, to imagine ourselves, uh, you know, reaching out to our community. But I think, um, and and we, I must confess, we were not a very um, ahead of the curve kind of technology company. But we we we've we've tried to pivot and use technology to a certain extent. It's working very well for us in terms of at least uh, uh, not generating business, but you know, at least engaging communities, communicating with them, and uh, helping, uh, trying to sort of guide them uh, through this phase. Uh, last piece of advice to SMBs, again, uh, and businesses at large, uh, is about runways. You know, we are all talking about runways at these times when it um, looks at cash flows and stuff like that. So you have to plan your marketing strategies linked with your runways, whether your runway is three months, six months, 18 months, 24 months, whatever you plan, and plan your marketing strategies with a short-term, mid-term, long-term strategies, and uh, uh, you know, uh, align them with your business strategies, and see how we can, who, how you can maximize them uh, in these times. Uh, you know, um, is is uh, my last piece of advice. So, uh, so this is a bit about uh, uh, what we are doing at Franchise India and Entrepreneur India. Um, uh, I once again thank you all for joining and um, now I would like to introduce my, um, uh, my uh, our, our special guest uh, this morning uh, Mr. Sunal Dabral. Uh, honestly uh, uh, Mr. Sunal doesn't need any introduction I mean he's a he's a stalwart he's one of the iconic uh, professionals in the industry uh, uh, with three decades of uh, of uh, um, uh, body work that he's done, which has impressed us. We are of all, um, it's kind of a fan moment for me because you know, he, we've, we've seen his, uh, his great work and we've grown up with uh, uh, the great brands that he's built um, early days with Okelby, um, uh, Lintas, um, he's headed uh, Bates in India, he's headed uh, Okelby in Malaysia, he's done uh, he's in three key markets in Asia, Malaysia, Singapore and India, he's done some phenomenal work. His last assignment was uh, as a vice chair and um, chief creative officer for Okelby in India uh, and Southeast Asia. And uh, on 31st of March, he's, uh, he's formally announced his uh, entrepreneurial journey and he's now, um, as, um, you know, open, open to business uh, uh, with his own agency, which he's, he'll shortly uh, disclose, um, uh, you know, uh, the brand and business. Uh, but he, uh, the agency is going to be uh, uh, helping a lot of businesses out there uh, with, their, uh, with their creative needs, with whether it's uh, phones, web, um, uh, a lot of advertising uh, opportunities. So without uh, further delay, I, I welcome and I request uh, Mr. Snal Dabral to take over. Thank you. Thank you, Sachin. Thanks a lot. That was a very uh, generous introduction. Thanks a lot. And uh, uh, especially uh, these days, you know, when uh, one doesn't know what, whether one is coming or going. Uh, let me just take this poll out of my sight here. Hmm. So, uh, hi everybody. It's very odd that I can see myself, but I can't see any of you. But I guess that's what webinars are all about. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've done zillions of Zoom meetings, but uh, this is the first time that I'm doing a webinar. And I think I'll enjoy it, I'm sure. Although I'll be the one who'll be speaking and sharing things with you. But I, I'm trying to imagine that I'm, I'm looking at all of you, right? And I can see uh, all of you uh, sitting at your own homes, uh, healthy, safe, uh, smiling, uh, enjoying, making the best of the situation that we are in. Uh, so, you know, uh, I decide advertising one of the things that i keep talking about also is that i've got other interests besides besides uh, advertising uh, one of them is obviously visual storytelling filmmaking so that that's what i'll be now getting into writing and directing so it could be a feature film it could be web series it could be ad film so that's what we i'm working on now uh, but besides that i'm also there are a couple of 
there are a few passions of mine uh and cup two of them are actually playing blackjack and single malts these have been two big passions of mine and uh, these passions of mine have kind of you know taught me a few things uh, i've kind of it's very odd to say but uh, you know but uh, as they say you can you can learn anything from anywhere so i've learned stuff i've learned certain lessons from the single balls that i enjoy i've learned lessons from uh, blackjack uh, whether i win whether i lose uh, but the way one plays blackjack i've learned lessons from that and i was kind of you know when uh, sachin and rahul asked me to invited me to do this webinar and thank you for that uh, i was trying to think what should i speak on and then i realized that you know currently the situation that we are in we've got obviously we are all doing a lot of work but besides that this thing has given us time to even indulge in some of our passions whether it's cooking whether it's fitness whether it's, and i realized that each of these passions actually can play a role or give us certain lessons in terms of how we come out of this mess you know how we come out stronger how we come out better you know so i thought a uh, few of those lessons because the time is less i'll kind of share with you and with each of those lessons uh, i've kind of uh, brought together a piece of work that i did so hopefully sharing it on uh, zoom today the sound and the the there might not hopefully there's not much lag and you are able to enjoy some of those films you might have seen some of the films you might not have seen because a couple of pieces are work that i uh, did when i was in malaysia and singapore but before i start uh, why today's historic day let me start my presentation with that i'm sharing the screen now i'm sharing my keynote deck give me a minute Yep, it's here. Yeah so today can you all hear me can you hear me yeah so today uh in 1970 which is my god which is like 50 years back today is the 50th anniversary of a blast that happened in space 200 200,000 miles out of earth at 200 mi 200,000 miles distance distance from earth and in that were his figure and jim lovell and they were 
on board Apollo 13. And what happened was that there was a command module which was called uh, Odyssey. And uh, there was uh, uh, the lunar module, which was Aquarius. And in command module, they had a big blast. And uh, suddenly, all the power in the command module, and this is the blast that happened. The power in the command module went off. Their lunar landing plans were obviously aborted. And then this resulted in the spacecraft's main power source being cut. There was a loss of heat, loss of oxygen, loss of drinkable water. And what it did was it put the lives of these three man crew, which I said was Sigurd, Fred Hayes, and Commander Lowell, into huge danger. Now, with their lunar plans, are obviously aborted. The crew then worked with NASA Mission Control in Houston. Uh, and that's when he said these famous words, which was Houston, we've had a problem. Those lines were kind of changed and given to Tom Hanks, but they were actually spoken, <coughs> spoken by Seeger. But they were kind of quoted to Jim Lovell, who Tom Hanks played in the film. And they were changed to Houston, we have a problem. Instead of Houston, we've had a problem. Anyway, the lunar module, which was designed to carry just three people, just two people for only 45 hours onto the moon had to be then used for all the three to survive. Not just for 45 hours, for the whole of 90 hour journey back. So these three people took refuge, the three astronauts took refuge into the lunar module, which still had the oxygen supply, which still had the power working. But they had to save all that. So they switched off all the lights and they were in the cold, which kind of went down as much as three degrees centigrade on their way back to Earth. And NASA mission control, at one point in time, the astronauts looked at the line of the where the where the uh, the the line of the earth where the earth was the horizon to kind of tell mission control what their exact location was so amidst this huge if you call it adversity that was the adversity of the worst kind i mean i'm not that what we are living through is not bad but imagine these three people out there in space and what came out was a huge amount of creativity. It came creativity, resilience, uh, all the training that they had trained for for all these years, everything kind of came together in those 90 hours. In those 90 hours, when they kind of returned to Earth and finally splashed safely into the ocean. So these were the three people. So what does it, what does it tell us? It tell us, tells us that there is actually, adversity actually is the mother of creativity. So that's one way to look at it. So I thought that's what I'll talk about today with some examples, of course. And uh, here comes my first lesson from, I'm sure, you must have heard it in different phrases. But when you sit down to play blackjack, it's not about the card that you, cards that you're dealt, but how you play that hand. Adversity will come in. Problems will come. That's part of life. That's the, that's the reality of life. But it's how you respond to those problems. It's how you respond to the, that adversity. That makes all the difference. In that adversity, are you making the best use of the time that has been given to you? Are you making the best use of your resources, your training, your patience, your resilience? Uh, so as I said, it's not about the cards you're dealt, but how you play the hand that matters. Now the truth about adversity is that 
it's very important to acknowledge that we have the freedom to choose how we respond how we respond to people how we respond to events how we respond to circumstances we can all respond in a very negative way we can very respond in a very limiting way or we can choose to respond with more optimism with more uh, making better use of the time that have been given to us anyway let's go to the next one so this is the first film that i wanted to show you share with you uh this was for, for was for uh, coca cola and we did this film in singapore now why i'm showing you this film is that this film was a story the film the the the, the whole idea was uh, the the platform idea that we were working on was coke side of life it was about positivity it was it was about optimism that was the coke's kind of baseline and platform idea so we wrote a story about this high challenged person an interesting story about this high challenged person and uh, so the client was uh, client had bought few other films but this film was kind of in the back burner so we we are having some technical glitch it seems uh so we're trying to get uh, uh this is null back uh, on the screen Shivak has the uh... okay. 
so we'll as we wait for uh, uh, this is Nalda Brown to join back. Let me. Uh, let me uh, seek a show of hands. How many of you are uh, from the advertising uh, fraternity? Um, you know, ad agencies, brand consultants. Great, we, we've got Sunal back, uh, but, but do show a uh, raise of hands uh, for agencies. Hi, sir, you welcome back. Uh, back, yeah. So, so I'm I'm really sorry about this. But the internet is really becoming giving a problem these days. Mm. So, uh, so anyway, so we we gathered in this. Uh, uh, so it was a as I told you, story of a high challenge person, and uh, so we gathered at this lounge uh, before. Uh, the shoot was the next morning and in the evening we were all sitting in this lounge bar in Amsterdam and uh, at the hotel we were staying and we were having a meeting in terms of how the shoot will go the next day and we were discussing the whole film and the director said that uh, Kiran Desai, the actor uh, who we have cast at that high, high, as a high challenge person will be coming soon. So he said okay and uh, suddenly everybody in the bar there was a bit of a Sudden, sudden silence and everybody turns to look in the direction of the entrance and in walks Kiran Desai. Now Kiran Desai was like this high, you know, because he's a high challenge person. And he walks into the thing with the jacket kind of hanging and, you know, he's wearing a, he's wearing a nice kind of jacket and uh, jeans and he was wearing these boots and he comes in and he sits with us and he starts to chat. And within five minutes, he kind of, he was owning the meeting. He was, he was, he was talking, he was laughing, he was recounting stories, recounting stories of various shoots. Uh, he was the Oompa Loompa in, uh, in uh, Charlie and the Chocolate, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. He was the, uh, so he, he does, uh, as, as an actor, he had been doing, uh, uh, as he had been playing the stunt double for a lot of child actors and you know whenever you needed a high challenge person and he was telling these fantastic stories about all these places and in that moment I looked at him and I realized that there was nothing in the way he was behaving which told you that he's got such a such a challenge that he lives with there was not a trace of that and that was so inspiring to look at I mean uh, the, you'll see the film now that we had written, but the film was almost playing in my head, right, sitting there. I was seeing a kind of real life example. So this is, I mean, this is just an inspiration that I thought I'd share with you. So this is the first film and my experience that I want to talk to you about. Okay, the second one, uh, 
you know ipl is not happening right now this year so hopefully it will be there next year now this was uh, this i worked on it when i was in uh, bait and uh, why i brought this here is that because uh, obviously there was no adversity as such but uh, virgin mobile was a very small client in terms of the budget so i can drop the uh, in ip hello so i can drop sir uh, if you could uh, plug in that uh, sound once again oh, okay before you share i think uh, before you share uh, yeah, yeah. i'm getting go so on the top screen you will have to stop sharing and then reshare i'm just trying to get that yeah got it share right yeah got it great so this film you saw properly or was it wasn't without sound Here properly. Let's do it again. Yeah, great. Okay, so uh, as I said, the budgets were low, and uh, while all the other mobile telecom players had huge budgets and they were they would be present on TV, we didn't know what to do. And uh, so, as I said, uh, necessity at that time was the mother of invention. So we decided that uh, instead of TV, it was the first time that IPL was being uh, live. Uh, webcasted so we decided that we'll we'll be present let's do an a campaign that will be only there on the web and instead of doing so we we decided instead of doing a normal ad campaign let's create an indian panga league which would be these six friends who belong to six different teams and they kind of uh, rile each other because they all, they are in all opposing camps and that kind of gave birth to this idea and then we wrote made 104 films that ran so as i said necessity being the mother of invention so in the limited resources that we have which is going to happen as we come out of this in those limited resources how can we think creatively is the lesson that i got out of this take a look this is the this is the case study film what i'm going to show you is the case study film Uh, which will have later will give you the background of the campaign oh hello ji satrikal do you know what's the biggest thing in india hmm? it's not cricket it's the indian premier league the 2020 format of cricket han ji a lot of action drama excitement horror and cheerleaders 
all just in 20 hours and it's been bought by a billion people it is not a joke a billion people so for 45 days eight state teams fight with each other of course mine is punjab but sadly the last shit happens but that's not the point the point is during this time every brand spends millions and millions on tv so when virgin mobile wanted to advertise the lowest interest rate call rates during ipl they looked beyond tv i tell you how it went online where the target audience was already watching the live streams of the matches so for these cricket crazy fans virgin mobile created an alternate league the indian panga league which captures the spirit of sledging that happens between the fans the indian panga league was a series of 105 online films featuring verbal battles between eight passionate fans from eight different states over interstate calls aaj dekhiyo beta mcdonald kitni fast bowling dalega a ghanta mcdonald hai 30 minute se pehle no delivery bakwas karta are you loving it now no no i'm not loving it are you loving it karne ke baad kutta mera niche phek dunga The person we are trying to call is currently unavailable. Please try again later or phone up the Ready? Ready? Bol. Are what's the score yaar? Kya bhai tu match nahi dekh raha? Are my stomach is I'm getting the runs man. <laughs> But your team is not. Kya? Teri <laughs> do you know our team has just changed their colors oh very nice now uh, do one thing all you have to change is your batsman your bowler your coach your gynecologist your psychiatrist and change his bloody mukut yaar sone ka mukut pehen ke aisa lagta hai ramayan chal rahi hai yaar abbe hum raja raja kolkata wale fight like a real tiger tiger macha be careful there are very few left ha huh? Can you believe it? In just one month, Indian Panga League became a super hit and the third most subscribed channel on YouTube in India. The IPL ended on 25th April, but the Panga still goes on. Only gods can save your team. Hey, anything, ah, anything, anything. Hey, 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 don't anything me, okay? Don't anything me ever again. क्या तुम्हारे कभी किसी player ने duck नहीं मारा? Hey, दूध दूध की कोट का किस बाबा? Are you loving it now? Okay, this is. Uh... another lesson from blackjack people who play blackjack would know this uh, you know when it comes to basic strategy uh, you need to know the complete basic strategy if you need if you have if you want to have any hope of winning in blackjack when you sit down at the casino to play complete knowledge of basic strategy when to hit on what cards to stay on what cards to double down on what cards to split so what happens is that we are not fully prepared we are strong in few areas but uh, but kind of weak in areas that kind of occur infrequently now that is the same with life in life too it's always the exceptions that beat us you know we kind of coast along coast along coast along and suddenly whether it's a loss of job loss of relationship it's the exceptions that beat us or for example if you look at what's happening right now who could have predicted this but now could we take the time to understand as much whatever field that we are in i'm sure uh, people all of you are here from, you are from, you are from different fields you know you might have uh, different uh, so to say pursuits different businesses how can we take this time that has been given to us and become as 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 knowledgeable in our businesses about the clients that are deal that we are dealing with how can we get that complete complete knowledge so that whenever exceptions happen which beat us in life we are prepared and we don't lose our bank you know 
I, I know these are these are very 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 tough times, and this might sound a little simplistic, but this is just a thought that I thought I'll leave you with. Other thing that's really important in blackjack again is uh, which is really important in life also is to never lose control. And uh, every time we sit down to play, there are times that we will we will be dealt bad cards. We will have losing streaks when nothing is going in our favor. And that's that's when what happens is at times frustration and anger takes over on the table. So you start doubling down your bets. right but you are getting a losing streak so when you double down your bets you lose more and soon you got nothing left and so we lose control of our emotions and we end up losing everything we need to be prepared we need to know that these streaks are a part of life they are part of the game just like the winning streak and we have to patiently tide over them currently the situation that we are finding ourselves in can we approach it more optimistically knowing and not 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 lose our balance not i know a lot of us will feel will 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 feel uh, you know real real hardships loss of business loss of job also at times loss of job but can we can we can can we be can we take it calmly can we kind of tide over it knowing that winning streaks will also come and uh, let me just tell you give you one little story about this uh, and i'll take it make it quicker now because we are running out of time this was a film that we did for uh, sony bravia in singapore this is when i was in singapore and we had won the pitch for sony bravia to launch sony bravia television uh color color like no other was its main great colors was the main platform idea and uh, the story that we had presented to the client was that in on the great wall of china we will have these colorful dominoes kind of tumbling down the entire great wall of china and coming down to one of the villages so great wall of china a very monochromatic great wall of china and these colorful dominoes will tell a story of what sony bravia's color is we won the pitch on this client gave us the go ahead we were very very thrilled and soon this was in 2008 a month before we are supposed to go to the shoot china uh, announced that there can't be any shooting taking place in china prior to Six months prior to the uh, Beijing Olympics, because Beijing Olympics was happening at that time, so we were caught in a bit of bind, you know. And uh, so client called us for a meeting, and we were we knew that we are now losing the pitch. I mean, losing the business, because they had uh, they had uh, bought a story which had China, and now China was not possible. So I remember we were sitting in our in the in the in that in that meeting. and i was like you know so so as i was telling you n- not to lose your senses not to get frustrated not to get angry not to get depressed and i'm sitting there in front of the client and i'm thinking that i'm sure there's still a way of saving it there's still a way of saving it and i'm thinking and i'm thinking hard how how can we save this film and then suddenly it struck me that the first film of my uh, entire career that i shot was in jaisalmer and suddenly jaisalmer came in front of my eyes and i realized that jaisalmer is also a monochromatic city so as the client was looking at us for answers i without missing a beat told the client that you know we got an idea and that idea is to not to shoot at uh, in china but to shoot because china is not possible but to shoot it in jaisalmer which is also monochromatic and i quickly googled the pictures and showed them right there and then and they gave the approval so again making as much of the resources that you've got without losing your balance without getting emotional without getting frustrated without getting angry at what the at the cards that the life that the life has dealt us so this is the film that we made and uh, was loved a lot take a look Sky 
shine away This thing against the kind of situation that we are in but let me just explain to you a bit uh, what happens in blackjack is that uh, um, there are times that you get really good cards and you get a chance to split and double down and those are the times which ultimately decide if you play them right whether you will get up from the table winning or losing so what i meant by never play safe is to be as we come out of this mess are we prepared as we go forward there will be opportunities there will be opportunities of doubling down there will be opportunities of uh, of uh, you know of uh, putting everything behind those opportunities so will we be will we be ready for those op- opportunities when as and when they happen so what i'm trying to say is we are in a mess right now everything is looking gloomy but as there is a finite time to it and i'm i'm quite hopeful that it'll all get solved in due time but as we come out of it in the time that has been given to us are we preparing ourselves well so that when the opportunity comes we are ready to double down you know and uh, let me quickly tell you one story on this which is like that was number one this is when i was in ddb i was working on this account and we were supposed to create to present a campaign to them on friendship that was a platform idea so it occurred to me that instead of doing a normal ad campaign a 30 second ad can i write the new friendship anthem for india you know So instead of an ad can i write an anthem anthem for india an anthem that people will use 5 years down the line 10 years down the line every time they do a farewell video there all those farewell videos that you see on uh, on youtube could this become the soundtrack of all those friendship videos and uh, i wrote the song i wrote the anthem presented the idea to the client that it's not an ad we want to now do an anthem and a music video and launch it as a platform idea of number one yari and client was visionary enough and daring enough at that time to actually double down when this opportunity came and they gave us the permission to do it they approved it with all their heart and this the dal number one number one yari as a platform has now gone has now exploded is is there in there there in the, so many different avatars there are programs around it there are music videos around it uh, there are uh, there are there are uh, television programs branded huge amount of branded content around it but started as a as a small idea so take a look at this film now this film i i like the story so much that i decided to direct this film also so uh, i wrote it and directed this अरे मैं नहीं कर सकता तू जान आया तुम लोगों के ट्रैक्स भी यार तुम लोगों के नहीं हम लोगों के हर आसमां से ऊंची
there seems to be an all... issue with the yeah. voice. Uh, and we have a we have a running bit of yeah, yeah. amazing so, work, so, sir. Uh, yeah, sorry, you know that it got uh, you know there was a big bit of a break in between, and uh, so I had to kind of break my uh, I took so much time, and uh, next time hopefully the internet will work better. So I'll just yeah, we're uh, working kind of, all. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll just close. Yeah, we're all working to, remotely, uh, so yeah. I was saying, yeah. Sorry. So I'll just just close it by saying that uh, a it was great to be here. And B, I think it's it's the way we respond to this adversity that will make all the difference. Uh, look at this. Say we keep saying, you know, I don't have enough time to do this. I don't have enough time to do that. But now we've given, been given the time. What is the new things that we are learning? How we are preparing ourselves for for when it all kind of goes off? And uh, the other one really really important thing that I wanted to kind of leave you with is that what the kind of situation that we are in, the kind of big thing that has happened in this case is that whatever is the past is the past. It's actually uh, uh, everything has to be kind of looked at anew. It has, because this has challenged us in absolutely new ways. We have to leave what is behind and see whether we can write a new story, you know, newer way of doing things. How can we use technology more? How can we use, uh, you know, uh, how can we use resources more? How can we use, we use our network more? Uh, so newer way of looking at things and basically writing an absolutely new story. Great. So, uh, so thank you, know, you all. Uh, thank you Thanks much. a lot. Thank you much. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, a very inspirational uh, body of work that you have. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in um, with due respect to time, uh, I would now introduce uh, my co-panelist, uh, Rahul Kurana. He's a co-founder uh, of a company called Unbrand. Unbrand is a specialist. Uh, thank you, Sanatha. Um, okay. Great having you. Um, 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 Unbrand is a is a is a young startup which is uh, which is focusing on SMEs wanting to build brand. A lot of you guys been uh, been uh, uh, looking forward to this panel of great speakers. So uh, Rahul, over to you. So thank you very much. Uh, without wasting any time, I'll straight away dive into the topic. Uh, you know, I was so mesmerized with uh, whatever Sonal had shared, and you know, we had uh, chosen him as uh, the keynote speaker because storytelling. Uh, is going to play a very very critical role. Uh, what you know, so the messaging, you know, the kind of messaging uh, you know we need to put out there without sounding opportunistic. I thought somebody like Sonal uh, Dabral, uh, you know, I won't call them uh, reference points, uh, but you know who's seen, seen that, been there. So of course there is no reference point uh, to the situation that we are all in. But uh, I think uh, we marketers are sometimes, uh, you know, in fact, most of the times we are supposed to be storytellers as well. So I have an interesting uh, speaker lineup uh, for this session, uh, you know, and the topic is also very, very pertinent, which is altering marketing strategies uh, in record time. I don't know how many of uh, you can, uh, you know, relate to this topic. Uh, of course, you know, I, 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 when I heard about this topic, I could so, you know, I've lived this, uh, you know, for last three weeks, uh, what, you know, we had, you know, the kind of liberty uh, we used to have about uh, a week, uh, you know, about, uh, you know, in uh, till about February, uh, you know, of time, uh, things have completely, uh, you know, changed uh, upside down. Uh, you know, we are, we are, you know, we are called uh, or, you know, we are required to take decisions within no time. So I'll straight away, uh, you know, introduce the company that I represent. It's called Unbrand, uh, you know, so it came from my own background. You know, I've spent the largest uh, part of my life, uh, you know, it's the largest part of my professional life with uh, a company called, of course, everybody would know, uh, Ogilvy, uh, where Sonal also uh, came from. Uh, this is, this is what we do. Uh, so, you know, I, it actually came from uh, my own experience whenever we would sit for a client briefing, uh, you know, the market, uh, you know, like when, whenever there was a market uh, like uh, description, it was always about 70% unbranded and 30%, uh, you know, branded share and out of which about 70%, uh, you know, the client would have and, you know, he wanted to get more share out of within that 30% space. So, you know, what we do, we are the only solution provider 
that originated from India. Of course, there are a lot of solution, such solution providers globally. Uh, but Indian, uh, you know, like India, uh, we are the only ones as of now, uh, you know, we influence uh, all aspects of private brand development, uh, you know, from strategy to execution to supply chain, uh, consumer engagement, uh, as well as sales promotion. So what is a private brand? Uh, you know, private brand uh, is actually an in-store brand, uh, typically a modern trade outlet or an e-commerce uh, platform. They see an opportunity within a category, they launch their own brand or they launch their own label. So when a manufacturer, uh, you know, produces something uh, directly for a retailer, it's called private brand. We see it in many, many categories. Uh, you know, there are so many examples. Amazon basics is one such example. Uh, you know, we see this opportunity, uh, you know, uh, like really, really pertinent, uh, you know, at this point of uh, point in time, uh, particularly, when uh, you know the world is uh, uh, you know so uh, is at almost at a loggerheads with china and india definitely seem to be an alternate uh, you know uh, to shift their manufacturing uh, capacity japan is already doing that so situation uh, you know so uh, you know so it it doesn't look uh, it looks very it looks promising i would say uh, for the manufacturing sectors so we work uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, our purpose of existence, uh, you know, is to help out, uh, you know, contract manufacturer uh, to get more businesses from uh, business from retailers as well as an entrepreneur. So how it typically functions. So it becomes, it has become, yeah. Sir, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Hi. Good morning. Sorry. Can I continue? Is that something that you want to? Yeah. So uh, let's introduce so how it functions uh, particularly uh, you know we live in a uh, direct to consumer uh, you know uh, like era you know so and anybody today uh, is capable of launching a brand so right from uh, conceptualization uh, to r d to sourcing uh, to even supply chain uh, we partner with you uh, whether you're a retailer or a, uh, or a entrepreneur. So how it typically functions, I was giving you an idea. Uh, I was giving you an example, you know, that let's say you think of uh, some wacky idea as simple as, you know, or as crazy as that I want to come out with a, uh, like a cranberry flavor, uh, pre-packaged uh, or pre-mixed vodka, you know. Uh, now this idea may seem very simple by the, on the face of it, but there are so many things involved within this idea, you know, the R&D, uh, the sourcing, uh, you know, uh, the labeling, the certification, uh, finally the supply chain, you know, so there is so many, you know, so of course, uh, anybody, uh, you know, investments uh, is not the first, you know, the only critical factor, but you know, what is uh, most critical is, uh, one sec, sorry, I lost the guy. What is most critical is uh, things, uh, you know, are done properly. So this is exactly what we do. We help you build private brands. You know, you have a product idea. We help you bring it to life, uh, help you grow, uh, you know, whatever your needs, uh, we can create a, you know, a, a customized solution that delivers product, you know, which leads to stronger connection with your shopper. So we've got shopper insights, uh, you know, so as a portfolio, so I'll straight away come to, uh, you know, there are three products, uh, you know, within the portfolio as of now. Uh, which is first is Unbrand Asia 2020, which is going to be India's biggest expo for contract manufacturers and private labels. Uh, UBR uh, is the marketplace. It is a peer-to-peer -peer shared marketplace. You know, yesterday I was uh, speaking with Anand and, uh, you know, he, uh, he he'd mentioned about something about shared economy, how, you know, every company, particularly in B2B space, uh, will, uh, you know, will be ready probably or open uh, to share their resources or to share their underutilized capacity. So we, of course, thought it in B2C, uh, you know, perspective, but, you know, why not a B2B or, you know, like agency or a company with underutilized capacity could be utilized, uh, you know, by some other company. Yeah, so I think, uh, so this is exactly, this is under development, will be live uh, by, uh, hopefully by May 2020. The, the unbrand consultancy we've already launched so we are happy to receive uh, any briefs you have a product idea straight this is perhaps uh, you know uh, i would say world's first uh, non tech uh, 
product development platform uh, you can straight away reach, reach us uh, you know if you have a product idea so this is something about uh, us uh, now uh, you know i would uh, like to introduce uh, my first panelist so how i structured this uh, entire session uh, you know in the best interest of time we've already uh, exceeded uh, you know the time uh, that we spent in first session so we'll keep it uh, like a rapid fire for each of the speaker uh, one by one each speaker will come they will share their perspective uh, they will share about uh, you know how life has changed in last one month uh, you know and how they how how do they foresee the future uh, so you know they will share their presentation and after that we will take up question and answer so without wasting any time i'll straight away uh, invite uh, mr anand chakravarti uh, who is the managing director with essence uh, uh, group m uh, which is uh, the world's biggest uh, media agency uh, anand over to you thank you hi everyone i hope my audio is audio is clear yeah rahul can you hear me clearly yes i can hear you very okay clear. awesome great Well, good afternoon, everybody, and I'm going to dive straight into it. Uh, you know, so I think Rahul has introduced me. I think uh, you know, uh, I was looking at actually ending, you know, uh, my session with a thought, but I thought let me begin with it. So, firstly, look, I don't have a presentation, but I'm going to share some of my thoughts and pointers to you. And I'm talking from the perspective of being in B2B marketing myself in two ways. One, I work with clients who are fundamentally focused on B2B marketing themselves, and we help manage their investments. in media we help consult them on things that they can do to improve their b2b marketing but my business itself you know being an agency is also uh, i'm servicing clients myself so i myself i'm a b2b marketer myself and uh, you know everything i'm going to talk about is really going to come from both these perspectives so something that i was going to end the session with but i'm going to begin by saying that you know we know that this this too shall pass and pass it will but i think what really really matters is whatever happens on the other side of this situation will depend a lot on what we do during the weeks and months ahead right and i know it's easier said than done uh, each of your businesses are in very different life stages the challenges that you service or face today are going to be quite different given the fact that your product or service may fall in an essential bucket or a non essential bucket right and uh, uh, but the fact is that look i don't have to tell you that these are unprecedented times right uh, even if you have experienced the 2008 2009 global slowdown this is nothing like the situation then and therefore as a result the truth is that there is no playbook playbook there is no ready made framework available you know to put uh, put out there for people so what am i really sharing with you today is really based on part experience part intuition and part very importantly looking across what's happening in other businesses and other markets across the world and picking up cues from them right i mean this is a time that i think i'm really relearning and unlearning and learning new things because the fact is that you're seeing how businesses whether it's b2c or b2b are reacting to the situation in different ways both in india and across the world and the good part is that there is a treasure trove of information available online which is a great source of actionable insights as well so i would definitely say that while this webinar hopefully will give you some food for thought and insights i think there's a lot more out there that one can actually look at now let's look at what are the some of the things that we definitely need to do and looking at it from a b2b marketing perspective i think the first thing is you know going back to our solid basics here i think the first thing is making sure that you stay really in close contact with your customers and even more now irrespective of whether your business has gone down with them or not right as because the fact is that as much as there is pain in your business remember that they are going through the same themselves maybe at a varying degree but certainly they are feeling the pain I think what's really important and something that we are trying to do is really understand what are the challenges for our clients even if it is not relevant to the current product or service we offer them. But what's important is if you understand their challenge and then we focus on really how can we support them there whether it means creating collaborations with other clients we have in our portfolio uh, who may have let's say potential solutions for these clients and bringing them together whether it's looking at the larger ecosystem of our Uh, you know people who service us which is let's say uh, people in the broadcasting business people in the newspaper service and i'll give you an example of this right so we have an e-commerce client and obviously their supply chain as well as their distribution chain has are completely broken down because the government doesn't consider e-commerce as a currently as an essential service except for the pantry services now the fact is that they are obviously they are now trying to gear up their delivery mechanisms as well and for their logistics team who we who we traditionally don't deal with at all 
are obviously looking for opportunities to partner. Now, on the other hand, you have, let's say, the newspaper industry, which has a massive distribution system where there are people in every single city who pick up newspapers, distribute them to different hubs in every locality. And from there, they have a whole ecosystem of people who actually delivers the newspapers home. home. Now, this ecosystem has been disrupted extremely badly because a lot of buildings and colonies are not allowing newspaper delivery to happen. But here you have delivery system on one hand that is underutilized and then you have an e-commerce brand which is looking to enhance or improve their delivery system and can we bring the two together. So this has nothing to do with the media solutions or the analytics work or the marketing consultancy that I talked to this client about. But just by understanding what was the challenge and then looking at an opportunity that emerged in another conversation, I was able to bring them together. Right. I think the second thing is making sure that your digital channels, if you're using them for marketing, are absolutely up to date. Whether it's your website, whether it's your blog, whether it's your social network profiles, whether you have a Google My Business listing, make sure that it's up to date. This is a good time to ensure that your digital channels are absolutely up to date. And the next big thing is to optimize your digital channels. I think if you're doing SEO, make sure that you refresh it because what potential clients are searching for now may be very different from what they were searching for before. Similarly, look at your social and online advertising. And let's say if you're using any kind of influencer efforts, you really, really need to look very sharply and very closely at data emerging from these efforts and then reallocate budgets appropriately to things that are working for you. I think one of the lessons that we can take for China is the utilization of video, right? And how can you convert your marketing message or activities to video uh, and if you have live video access, let's say to LinkedIn for some of your, let's say, key team leads or your uh, business development heads, now is a good time to start using it. And why do we say that? I think because whether it is the average consumer or customers, the fact is that digital video is being consumed in very, very large quantity. And two, digital video is very, very easily shareable, which means that it's very, if you have a marketing message or a product or service message out there, which is targeting potential clients, it's very likely that if one of them finds it interesting, they may actually share it in an ecosystem where you have many more potential clients. I think one great example of this is that during the COVID crisis in China, a lot of Chinese B2B companies started using WeChat video to actually create sales uh, pitches to actually talk to client, potential clients about their product or service. Now, we may not have WeChat in India, but we have other ways to reach out to B2 potential clients and using video is something that could be one of the you know basic steps that one can take from a media perspective. If I step in and say, what should be our focus for our organization and people? And I would like to focus on really three key areas that I think, in my experience, I think is really, really critical in tidying over this current slowdown. I think the first area is really about agility and being really, really agile because as the weeks go by, you know, your customers are going to identify newer challenges. The challenges, what they are seeing today, are going to be different as we go ahead in this lockdown, which has now been extended till May 4th and beyond, right? And every new challenge, to my mind, that they are facing could be an opportunity for you. So anticipating some of these and responding quickly to others, in a way, will also help you secure your current business and more importantly, future growth. I think within your organization, you really look at need to think about whether you can redefine structures and skill sets because we have to start looking at what is going to be important to our clients in the months ahead because their businesses are not going to remain the same. You know, as clients have seen the use of technology, as clients have seen that you know, th things that disrupted their business, how they've been able to adapt in this new, uh, the new, new, as I call it, I think they will have new expectations from their partners and it's very, very important to start developing these capabilities internally. Of course, you can't develop capabilities overnight, but making that beginning by identifying what are likely to be the skill sets you need to have in your organization and then starting to think about how you develop them internally is going to be really critical. I think the second pillar, pillar I would say to focus on, uh, and this may sound like a cliche, right, is innovation. But I think the truth is that you need to have product teams that are looking to be geared up to seize emerging opportunities and either improve, add on to your existing product or service, or in some cases, there even may be a transformation in your product delivery or service. And again, if you look at early signals coming out of China, you're seeing that there are quite a number of businesses which have had to change their product or service delivery to clients because 
the new normal is very different from what it was before this crisis started. You know, and I don't think innovation is a buzzword anymore. In a COVID and post-COVID world, I think it's going to become a lifeline for businesses because the disruption that we are seeing now is not going to just happen in April and May, but it's going to happen over the next six to nine months for sure. And each time that disruption hits a client's business, there is a potential opportunity for you, but there's also a potential drop or loss for you if you don't really react to it in time. Right? And I think to make all of this possible, what's critical is to have a very open line of communication with your clients. You know, Bounce off possible ideas and any idea at this time is important. And the reason I say that is because just like you don't have a playbook for B2B marketing, neither does your client have a playbook which is readily available for them to tackle the situation their business is in. And the truth is all of them are looking for new ideas. So this is a great time to kind of keep them engaged, you know, doing sessions with their team on what are the poss possible solutions we can offer the client, no matter how small, and sharing with, with your clients. I think to quote the cliche, you know, necessity is truly the mother of invention. And I think this is the time where you need to do it. So for example, in some organizations, and I don't, it depends on the size of the organization, they've actually created two teams. And one team that focuses on the present, the present delivery of product and service and servicing existing clients. And there's a separate team which has been created to only focus on what is likely to be important in the next three to six to nine months. And getting that team to focus entirely on either looking at how your current product or service needs to change or starting to develop a completely new product line or a new service line that has potential in the months and years ahead. Right? And that's one way some organizations are tackling it. I can tell you that you know, within our organization itself, you know, we are already looking at restructuring teams. We've gone through an entire skill mapping exercise. and We've identified what are the skill sets that we think our clients are going to be investing in in the months and years ahead. And if we are not prepared with those skill sets, then we are going to lose out. And therefore, starting to develop them despite the constraints, it's not going to be easy, but we have to start identifying and developing them. That's the only way we'll be able to be ready for the future. And the last point I leave you with is, is service. I think all of you in the B2B business know the importance of this, but I think over-indexing on service in the short term will really help you ensure long-term relationship with clients, right? And I think even how well we service, even a diminished requirement for a client can make a world of a difference, right? Because the fact is that holding on to and cementing an existing relationship is always easier than trying to acquire or nurture a new one during these times. And I think that's something we need to really remind ourselves of. And no matter how hard, I think the fact is that, you know, we will have to show compassion for our clients and their businesses despite our own tough times that we're going through you know, offering deals and solutions, which, you know, while being very, very consultative in our approach when we're servicing them. And while it may not bring revenues immediately, I think ultimately, I think it will help us really maintain, restore and enrich these relationships. And that will help really bring in the budgets and revenue when things start to return to normal. Right? I really hope this helped. Thank you so much for your time. So thank you, Anand. Uh, I've been receiving some questions also, but we will take it uh, towards the end of the session uh, without uh, again wasting any time. I'll straight away invite my next panelist, uh, who is uh, so you know so who heads uh, Mastercard's lab. Lab is a director at Mastercard's, uh, very very renowned uh, sales and marketing professional. Uh, why we've got him so that you know he can represent the startup and uh, entrepreneur ecosystem. Uh, you know, I think uh, his virtual background pretty much talks about uh, you know. Uh, what he is capable of doing in terms of technology. Uh, so over to you, Varun. Thank you. Thanks uh, very much, uh, Rahul, and uh, thanks uh, Anand for setting a good perspective on um, my presentation. First of all, good afternoon, everyone. I think you know in, in the current uh, uh, coronavirus time, it's it's great to sort of connect with everybody virtually. As Mastercard, we sort of understand the situation that everyone is in right now. We you know we know it's difficult for families for people with families and also for businesses right uh, what we are doing as uh, as an organization is again keeping a close watch on what's really happening in the ecosystem and at the same time ensuring that we are able to really provide and protect firstly for our our employees and also provide uh, services for our consumers right 
if you look at what's really happening across uh, the organization i think the most important thing is to have continuity of business so as mastercard we've built you know resilient core uh, systems to make sure our businesses continue as usual we have a comprehensive business continuity planning so i think those are a key importance when we, even before we look at innovation or how we move forward so i think our commitment to our customers to provide services and core for us is really providing you know commerce so we we continue to do that today and for the future we'll be making sure that we are able to provide services for commerce as a network and without further ado let me just share my screen with all of you and really present uh, a, you know a view on really how we look at uh, innovation and how we sort of uh, you know look at connecting with people when it comes to innovation as well so let me know when you guys uh, can see my screen okay great so you know the reality for all of us even before we got into the new normal as we speak now is that the consumers are evolving right all of us in our various different realities be it you know as entrepreneurs as startups as big organizations know that there is convergence which is happening today what do i mean about convergence right most of us today use a smartphone have a smart watch we are connected to each other with our devices with our smart tvs with so many of devices that are there today much before today's reality virtualization was everywhere e-commerce was continuing to be a great trend now it's become even more important than it could ever be you know if, uh, i was reading the other day the, the, we are having this conference on zoom that's apparently now having much more valuation than some of very very established companies in a matter of few weeks right so how do we make sense of the new consumer reality how do we continue to make sure that we evolve in this convergence i think that's something as an organization we all should be cognizant of and as mastercard and as mastercard labs the team that i represent i think this is something that we are very focused on if you look at you know a lot of time people talk about that hey is technology or is innovation limited to only certain brands or certain categories of industries i in my personal view and the view that we have as an organization absolutely not and this is the example that you see on the screen is a most powerful example who would have thought that a consumer brand which is making shoes so many months back has all all already been evolving in their product category making it virtual how do how do they virtually connect with consumers how do they give options to consumer to play with their product i think those are the signs and the things we should be you know looking for when when we are talking about innovation when we are talking about desirability when we are talking about b2b marketing all of this is again a sign for us to see how do we continue to evolve at the same time another thing that we are all aware of the way regulations work across the 200 plus countries that we operate in as mastercard we know that there is a great regulatory environment and every every country or every market that we are a part of there is a complex regulatory environment that we are focusing on how do you make sure that you continue to innovate at the same time being cognizant of what's the, what the ecosystem has uh, in store for you so i think these the consumer trends the convergence how you look at product these are the things which we kept at the back of our mind and in, interestingly you know what we do at labs to sort of give you a perspective also is that how do you make sure that you know you you're able to filter out the no, signals from the noise right there is so much noise around internet of things artificial intelligence so on and so forth there's so much happening around the world how do you make sense of it and i think the purview that we have as mastercard labs is that and as as then the r and d teams that we look at is that how do you filter out the signals from this noise and that's something i would leave as an important purview for people to look at for, for simply from our perspective we have we have made these as three pillars and again each each organization has their own strengths and reasons to do what they need to do for us we've kept it in three pillars one is an r&d team which is focusing on building new products and platforms we're sort of you know the blue ocean think tank from the organization where we are able to sort of create different platforms play with purpose it does not mean that we are building things which are not relevant and that's really the second pillar comes into the play the team that i represent which is innovation management how do you make sure that you're able to connect the dots of what's really relevant today what is it that your business needs perhaps tomorrow but at the same time 
How do you make sure that you provide the thought leadership, not just for your organization, but for your consumers? As Anand was also sharing that it's really important that you continue to connect with your customers. As MasterCard, we've been doing that very proactively to all our issuers, merchants, et cetera. Our teams have been connecting really just to start a dialogue with, right? How do you connect with them to make sure that you're able to support them in things that they can't do? For example, for you and us, getting onto a Zoom call, hosting this Zoom call, sharing presentations may be very simple, but maybe for some, some organizations, some customers of yours, something as simple as using a Slido or a Miro tool may not be as easy. How do you continue to even think of those things is, is important when it comes to providing thought leadership? And, and, and goes without saying, and, and what you're seeing on the screen, by the way, is not specific only to current times. This is our mantra even before we got into the current scenario which is the third pillar for me, which is transformative partnerships. We are very humble to recognize the fact that, you know, we can't do everything on our own. And that's really where it's important to engage with the ecosystem. And that's where we have a structured program called Start Path. I'll talk to you about it very briefly on, you know, what do we do with Start Path as well. But broadly, these are the three pillars that you look at when it comes to our approach in, in looking at innovation and what we do as MasterCard and MasterCard Labs. Importantly, uh, I think a lot of people ask me this, that, you know, are you really just, you know, exploring things which are, you know, let's say 20 years ahead of time or 50 years ahead of time? You know, the answer is very simple. We we follow the simple principle of how do I connect desirability, feasibility, but at the same time, make sure that it's commercial today. So yes, we are prepared for the future. Yes, we are continuously evolving when it comes to safety and security, of, be it our core systems, everything. We continue to evolve and invest in technology to make sure our customers have the right products and platforms. At the same time, we are also evolving to see what is really desirable for the future to make sure me and my customers are really out there when it comes to the products and the platforms, which means that today, if there's a need to make sure that there is a platform to provide provenance solutions on a blockchain, can MasterCard provide it? Yes. Do, do we have solutions to support our customers when it comes to artificial intelligence or simply a, an augmented reality API, right? You, you see today right now, I'm not sitting in office. I am working from home. There is a virtual background that I'm using. How do I make sure that there are augmented reality payment APKs that if, if on the screen we want to buy a product of a customer, we, they can actually use the augmented reality APIs and get those going. So those are the, some of the things that we look at when it comes to wearing a strategic lens. So, so again, that's the perspective that I wanted to leave you on in terms of the strategic lens when it comes to labs and what we do as MasterCard. Moving on to the third pillar in the interest of time, is connecting with emerging startups. And that's something that we are, we are very proud of. This is a platform we started close to five years ago. And every year we get about 5,000 plus application across the globe. We, we select about 40 startups in a year to be a part of the program. It's a six month program. And to clarify, it's not an incubation program. It's a program wherein we're able to provide scale for the startups. At the same time, my ecosystem in 200 plus countries of banks and merchants, how do we get them together for a structured pilot? That's what the program is all about. And we, we, we make sure that the, you know, the startups who qualify for it or who we uh, approach for it are really able to provide value in the real term. It's, you know, while we do support uh, the startups in terms of helping them with, let's say a sandbox environment or helping them with other, other platforms, but in terms of simply providing the whole ecosystem, the equation is what we look at. Uh, this is another important uh, view for people who ask these questions that do we only work with fintech startups or startups who are providing uh, payment technologies? The answer is simply no. If you look at this chart, in fact, 75% of our engagement that we do is actually outside of the fintech ecosystem. And that's really what adds to the strength of 250 plus products that MasterCard already has. How do I make sure that I evolve and continue to work with different partners who are providing AI services, loyalty solutions, financial inclusion capabilities, and are able to really provide value to our customers? Again, important is keeping your customer to the core. Whatever we do as MasterCard, as a team within MasterCard, which is labs, is keeping the customer at the core. 
I would not go out and really scout for a startup which is not really adding any value to my ecosystem or to me as an organization, right? Purely from a valuation perspective or that company may grow in valuation. That's something that we never look at in terms of a reason to get a company on board at StartPath. What's most important is what is the value that startup brings, how innovative they are, how they can support the ecosystem. And I think that's the message for, for people who are looking at this time that how can you work with your ecosystem? I know it's a difficult time for all of us to collaborate. How do you collaborate with the ecosystem to get things going is something important. Again, uh, we help uh, the platform with the platform with monthly connects, quarterly connects and structured pilots for the startups. But, uh, you know, the, the formal presentation is over, but, you know, it's few thoughts I wanted to leave you with when it comes to looking at B2B, because for us, MasterCard, uh, everything that we do is primarily B2B to C. It's driven through our partners, such as issuers and merchants. And what we are doing in this unprecedented time is really reaching out for them. We are not making use of this time as an opportunistic marketing. It's not the time to do any of that. We're simply being there for our customers. We are starting few initiatives, which is awareness. A lot of you know that contactless transaction or tap and go transaction is something which helps people stay away from cash and you know get, getting the virus through cash. So that's something that we are helping our partners with. Simply going with them with one of the biggest retail stores that you will see, we are coming up with an education video. That's the marketing that we are doing. There is no offers. There is no, uh, you know, use of talking about use MasterCard specifically as a product, but simply an education video on how they can use contactless at retail transactions. We have partnered with Confederation of All India Traders, which represents 70 million merchants. And again, we are doing a, a video. We are doing WhatsApp reach out. We have started a digital India campaign with them, wherein through the trade body associations, how can we make it simpler and better for them? Something as simple as how can we help them start their online store? If a small merchant or Kirana shop wants to do it, how can we do that? Those are the sort of initiatives we have taken as an organization when it comes to financial inclusion and support globally. We have pledged over $100 million to help Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We are working with MSME category to really support on those categories. Uh, we're working with HDFC Bank and the Millennial Card really, again, just to reach out to the millennials and say, how can they help uh, transact those uh, online? It's more around education at this point in time and making services available, the platforms available that we are focusing on, not about really making use of marketing for anything else. So I think that's something that I would uh, leave you with. And from a startup's perspective, uh, there are so many trends happening. I don't know if you've seen Airbnb sharing a video recently and an a emailer saying that you can actually start learning from those people who were earlier renting out their houses. So those are the evolving times that startups need to look at. Keep the basic principles in place. Use design thinking. Use that. Look at what's really important for your customers. And more than anything, I think, have that empathy and connect with partners to see how you can all uh, you know, come out of this together. So th those are my thoughts and happy to take uh, questions. I know we are pressed for time, but uh, happy to connect after this to take questions. So thank you, Varun. Very insightful uh, for startups. Uh, again, uh, we are all uh, running behind uh, our schedule. Uh, so I'll straight away, without wasting any time, uh, call upon our next speaker, uh, Mr. Govind Raj uh, Avarsala. Uh, he's from, uh, he's, he heads enterprise solutions at Vodafone Idea. Uh, so Govind, I would request you to please keep it very brief. Uh, we will take up questions. I'm receiving a lot of questions on WhatsApp. I would request all of you to please post it on the chat box. If we are in, unable to uh, take up all the questions uh, within the stipulated time, uh, we promise you we will respond uh, to you within 48 hours. Uh, you know, we will address all the questions. Uh, so please feel free to ask anything uh, to any of the panelists. Thank you. Sure. Go Thanks, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Rahul. I hope I'm, I'm audible and my screen is visible as well. Yes, clearly. Thank you. Okay. Um, thanks, I'm Govind. I'm part of the uh, Vodafone Idea Business Services team and I lead the marketing there. Uh, in the next five to six minutes, um, I thought I'd share some perspectives and some practitioner view on what the B2B marketing strategies are and how we are pretty much uh, throwing everything out of the window, what we used to do before. Uh, but before that, let me share uh, what I went through as a thought process in the morning. I clearly had two big decisions to take. One is, what's my dress code for this webinar? 
and I clearly come to one conclusion that I think the trousers are not relevant anymore. And the second big decision is what's the wall at the background? Um, <clears throat> clearly, uh, being based out of Mumbai, I can tell you that uh, not many houses are uh, designed for work from home, and these are all makeshift uh, desks. And clearly, I see a big opportunity, whether you call it B2C or B2B, to go and redesign all the homes for the new normal. So uh, <clears throat> let me begin with asking your sentiment, and I think if you could leave your thoughts on the poll, what is that one word you think best describes uh, the post the pandemic situation? I hear uh, post May 3rd or whatever is a lockdown time frame. Um, so what do you think is that one word um, that would redefine uh, how the situation would look like? As you um, type the poll and I check the result on the poll window, um, I clearly thought before this pandemic, they were all looped about using the words like digital transformation, um, clearly uh, transformation as a word or disruption as a word. And clearly if you um, see the social memes going out there, the verdict is very clear. Who is driving digital transformation? I think the answer is uh, right in front of us. So it's the, it's the current situation. So um, moving on, um, clearly I think uh, I've built some thoughts, but I think I clearly kind of time it to um, ensure that all of us get to hear the other speakers as well. Firstly, uh, <clears throat> what do we see or what do I see as the uh, defining trends? There are many out there and you can read many reports and I'm happy to share those links. Clearly, some things that struck me is the changing behavior. It could be the CIOs and the CTOs or the startup founders or the consumers like you and me consuming uh, direct to uh, consumer services. Clearly, the McCann study, and I found it quite telling, uh, tells you that the world forever has changed. And it calls out three clear trends. One is we're all going to spend more time with family, which is true. Second, we will become more conscious about environment and we believe that uh, we will contribute to reduction in carbon uh, emissions. And third, our consumption patterns, our water value in life is going to clearly change and we're going to focus clearly on what really, really matters in life. Second bit, and it's what the marketers have all been harping about. There's always been a technology adoption curves and the broken chasms, early adopters, late laggards. Clearly, there has never been a moment, even in B2B, more apt than now where the lines have been more clearly distinct as a pre-COVID or a pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. The technology adoption is more equitable, right from the toddlers to the people of the 90s, um, right from startups and the SMEs and the micro SMEs to the global companies. So it's been more democratic. Second, there is a whole new segment that has evolved and we did a research around the 600 global companies and it emerges that the, there are about 3 million uh, just amongst the 600 companies, 3 million new first time work from home um, category of workforce. Clearly that's a new segment. We don't understand uh, what their priorities are, how their work-life balances are. And third, we clearly are seeing our customers saying that even for a basic commodity service that we used to offer like a SIM card, we cannot offer it anymore directly physically because uh, it calls for physical delivery and the lockdown and stuff. So the, clearly the, the buying patterns and the service patterns, I think Anand referred to the service, clearly becoming, can I do it sitting at home? So what are you, how are you relevant to me in these times? And the third bit is about how the companies we see are, have overnight uh, changed the way they have been making decisions. And I can tell you example of just a simple tool like a WebEx or a conferencing tool, the decision making time frame was close to one to three months, anywhere between that. Now it's now about 45 minutes. You may not believe me, but uh, we have got many customers whom we turned on the G Suite or the Microsoft or um, the audio conferencing services that we normally sell overnight or in a matter of hours. Clearly, um, the, uh, the CIO and CTO have become more conscious about uh, empowering the digital workforces. Second, the supply chain risks. Because we have been sourcing traditionally from the manufacturing powerhouses of the countries, the companies are forced to really look at the geopolitical risks in a very different light. And clearly we see more technology investments going into the supply chain. And sorry, I missed out the blockchain, um, but IoT and the technologies like blockchain will probably um, be invested upon uh, so that it gives more visibility to the end-to-end -end sourcing components. And the third bit is about the people. So all of us are getting used to the new normal and work is no longer the place you go to. So 
Um, so what is the new challenge for the, uh, the line managers or for the corporate leaders? It's about building the trust. And like Anand uh, and uh, Varun alluded to, how about you skilling or reskilling, learning and unlearning? So clearly, uh, I can tell you that from my experience, I also lead the training. Um, so we had about 80% or 70% of our training uh, physical and 30% digital. But for Q1, there's no alternative but to have 100% digital uh, uh, the training methodologies. Second uh, point is, I thought I'd share, it might be relevant for the audience out here as to what's really happening in the, in the B2B world when I talk about in the telecom. Firstly, um, key important trend as the connectivity becomes oxygen um, is I think there are people who are keeping the lights on because we are in the essential services category like few others. Um, data consumption has shot up by 45%. This is in the first two weeks of lockdown. Um, clearly, I think it's uh, quite an evident trend. But what is important and what I see is, uh, uh, is more relevant is even the Soho's and the startups, even as they go through the challenges, they clearly are talking to us or having a different conversation. Uh, earlier, it used to be India, it's a price conscious discussion, but clearly right now, three things uh, are standing out when the enterprises are adopting technologies like uh, the security, where they're securing the endpoints of yours and mine because we're all working out of the land environments, uh, collaboration tools, or the customer intimacy tools like the interactive voice responses and so on. Three things that they are really conscious about that's come out in our research is one, a price is important, but that's not the first thing. Tell me that you are going to keep the service alive. Second, that you would be proactive in understanding my situation, my BCP policy or the work continuity, and you are conscious about partnering with me rather than being a vendor. And the third, obviously, is a flexible contracting because we all have we all have contracts that have clauses that run to one to three years. Clearly, some of them may not feature the force majeures and some of these clauses. And uh, let me remind you, all of us are not like Wimbledon who have cashed in on the insurance. So sometimes some people are lucky, but clearly uh, the times call for flexible contractings as well. So uh, let me with that uh, jump to sharing my personal thoughts on marketing as a fraternity. And I think there are many startups, founders, and the marketing folks. Uh, what I thought I would contrast is what is business as usual and what do I call it as a new normal um, that pretty much is already on set. Uh, in B2B, I used to measure my team and I used to get measured by three Rs. Um, there is no dearth of acronyms in marketing, as you can see. Revenues, uh, first degree or second degree. Am I contributing to the leads and thereby to the opportunities and to the revenues? Relationships, how deep and wide am I bringing in the new C-level or the new founder contacts or the new proprietor contacts if it is an SME? And third, clearly, is a brand reputation. But what is changing is how relevant are the in these times and hey, are you Govindra, the... sorry i'm interrupting you here yep. uh, we are uh, running really behind schedule so do you think you could just conclude it and yep. you know say some part yeah like, okay so let I me agree. uh, i agree let me call out one thing the ways of working and clearly staying true to rahul's agenda which is about altering strategies so we used to take weeks and months uh, to run a campaign uh, or a research now the new normal is 5 days and if you don't believe me, I'm going to share and leave this deck with you and Rahul. Uh, you could share and see those videos out there. Uh, clearly, there are two things, uh, examples. One is the, the global campaign that we did in Italy in five days with uh, consumers and customers contributing. The whole campaign was shot in five days and nobody's stepping out of the home. And second, uh, the 600 customers research that I talked to you about was done completely work from home without an agency, but with the team. Again, five days. So Rahul, the answer is there out there for you. Um, the agencies out there or the companies out there, don't hold me to it, but we'll try our best to stay to the true normal. Uh, Rahul, I think uh, to be fair to you and the rest of the panelists, I'm going to share this deck with you. And if you could send it over to the audience, they have all the links um, and I turn it over to you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, and please feel free to uh, post any questions uh, you would like to ask Govindraj. We will definitely, definitely uh, revert to them within, a within 48 hours. Uh, so my next panelist, uh, uh, Mr. Rajesh Srinivasan, I'll straight away, uh, you know, ask him, uh, I would request him to straight away take it up and uh, briefly, uh, you know, share his perspective, uh, you know, how things for his clients have changed in last one month. Thank you. Over to you, Rajesh. Rajesh, can you hear us? Uh, 
Rajesh, if you could please unmute your audio. Yeah. Am I audible now? Yes, clearly. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rahul. So let me quickly jump into the discussion pointers, what I have uh, here today for all of you. First of all, from B2B marketing strategy perspective, we, when, take, when we take iceberg, an iceberg as an analogy, all the, top, the tip of the iceberg is all these mass brands which we see, but at the end of the iceberg, what we see, what we don't see is all these B2B businesses, which act like a backbone to uh, all these businesses. So from that perspective, how we need to see this crisis and how we can handle this effectively. I have just seven pointers. So number one, be more pragmatic. So what do I mean by being more pragmatic is for any B2B business, we, we need to understand our client's business and the customers of our clients also. It means our customers serve other clients, right? So if we deeply understand the demand supply dynamics of our customers, it will be easy for us to tailor made our strategy for them. At this point of time, nobody is willing to buy anything. So it becomes even more relevant to deeply understand our customers so that we can stay relevant. That is point number two. So now if, if we go back and see people, conventional B2B in any B2B business, the businesses which we serve, for example, um, uh, when it comes to, I'll give you an example uh, of this vendor. See, he has pivoted. He's from uh, Tirupur. There is a place called Tirupur in Tamil Nadu. He's a vegetable vendor selling tomatoes. Now he's running an offer which says like 15 rupee worth tomatoes only. Rajesh, sorry worth. to interrupt you here. If you could maximize uh, the present presentation view. One minute. It's not full screen. Just I press uh, yeah, yeah, Alt F4, Alt F4. It's taking some time, I don't know. I think I need to do from the beginning. It has got. Yeah, yeah. If stuck. you could uh, reshare your screen. Uh. Now, if you could open your presentation. Yeah, one minute. System has got and one minute. We could we could take uh, Pratima first, and then yeah. So uh, Rajesh, maybe uh, we can 
take the presentation uh, you know later uh, yeah, you know i'll move to the next thing. Yeah, yeah, you can continue. Yeah, I'm yeah, so sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Rajesh. Till that time, uh, you fix, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. the basic. Ahead, yeah. yeah, so Pritima, uh, our next panelist, uh, we would uh, request, uh, you know, you to come and present your brief. Uh, so Pritima Bhadwaj, who is the, uh, Pritima Bhadwaj, who is the CEO at Entrepreneur Media. Uh, she will share her perspective. Thank you. Over to you, Pritima. Uh, thank you, Rahul. And good afternoon, everyone. I know it's been a very long panel and we are going out of time. So, you know, I've already got a stinker from my co-panelist Rahul to make it short and brief. And I'm going to try to stick to that. Uh, and I do understand all my co-panelists were sharing some uh, presentation. I also have some. Uh, we might go overboard, but still, I'll try and skip a few slides and go through some relevant ones. Just allow me a second. Uh, Rahul, is the screen uh, visible? Yes, it is uh, visible. If you could Fantastic. make a full screen. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. So my name or is Pritma fine, Bhardwaj. Yeah. I represent Entrepreneur Brand Solutions. Entrepreneur, Entrepreneur Brand Solution is a, uh, you know, it's a entrepreneur media group. We run a print publication, digital publication, and a very hardcore focus is towards entrepreneur startups and SMEs. Uh, we offer 360 degree solution. Uh, we are into media, we are into B2B events, we are into advisory and transactional services. Uh, I'm very proud to say that we reach over 22 million unique audience every month across the globe. We are in about eight countries. Uh, we particularly lead the India and Asia chapter for entrepreneur. Some of the communities we focus very strongly on are uh, food and beverage, retail, small business, education, entrepreneurship, franchise, startup, salon and wellness. Uh, we also happen to run three business magazines, Entrepreneur, Retailer and Franchising World, all three put together. We have a uh, you know, readership of about 2.5 lakh audience. Uh, we also cater to some other categories and uh, we own some IPs which are very, very popular now. Um, some of them are Entrepreneur 2020, Entrepreneur Live, which happens in USA, Singapore and now India. Uh, we do. Uh, we are very strong in food and beverage. We run Indian Restaurant Congress in different parts of the country. We do. We are very strong in franchising. We do about more than 200 B2B Consumer Connect initiatives, which are on-ground initiatives uh, throughout the year. On an average, we do about 600 B2B events, which is you know every day we do about two, and people come to us and say that uh, is it really true? It's it's true that you know we have a very large team and we manage to pull. Uh, two events every day and bringing about two to three thousand audience b2b audience together every day while uh, it's not the same time anymore and we are more living in a virtual world now uh, these are some of our uh, visitors uh, in india so we touch about 10.2 million monthly page views we have six million visitors we have a lack of circulation only for entrepreneur our leadership is largely ceo cfos and entrepreneurship startup community uh, you know, uh, 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 while uh, uh, I don't know if it's relevant in today's time or not, but I would uh, I very quickly like to touch upon what Entrepreneur Brand Solution is, and I'll do it through one of the st case studies we've done for Sprint. Sprint is a client in USA, and you know we created a project for them called Entrepreneur uh, Grow Your Business. So Sprint came to us and they said, while we are very popular and one of the largest uh, telecom businesses in USA, but we want to go in depth and have a larger engagement with the startup community. So we created this elevator pitch uh, program for them. And I'm very, very proud to say uh, that it is uh, like the new Shark Tank of America. Now Facebook has rated us as uh, the top business programs in the country. It's a typical, uh, typical elevator pitch. It's a typical elevator pitch where we get about, uh, we get some founders of the organizations coming and pitching. Uh, if uh, if uh, the idea is liked by the judges, uh, you know, they get a chance to feature in various media, they get a chance to get funding. Um, uh, and I think it's running from last four years now and uh, this year also it's continuing. I think I've lost my screen somewhere. I'll try to get it back very quickly. So, you know, if you see the numbers and the graphs, so when we started, 
uh, we were hardly uh, you know reaching out to about 400000 uh, audience and these are all b2b audience and within a matter of months we reached to about 20.6 million community so that's that's the power of our media that's the power of a b2b media and uh, it's it's growing continuously i don't have the latest number with me right now but it happens to be a very very successful and powerful program some other other co-branded activities we are doing is uh, we do a lot of work with fifth third bank i think i'm going to uh, skip this uh, to save some time uh, another very popular initiative of ours is entrepreneur live like i mentioned we do entrepreneur live in usa it's a on ground activation program with more than 1000 Uh, entrepreneurs startup and sme communities from various sectors we bring them together uh, on a days program we have a lot of startup pitches funding program uh, you know one on one connect uh, programs we do it in singapore recently we've also launched it in india we've done it in bombay bangalore and we plan to take it to other cities as well uh, there's a lot of work we also do for women entrepreneurship in the country so we do an on ground activation program which is called shepreneurs we also do a print program where, you know where we bring all the top women entrepreneurs of the country so the uh, you know the slide which i'm showing is class of 2019 we also come about to come up with a class of 2020 then we are also doing a couple of programs for the tech community tech entrepreneurial community we also uh, i'm very very uh, proud to announce that you know we are taking this as a virtual event now and this will happen on the 4th of may where, where we are bringing the top 50 technology entrepreneurs and about 3000 people to attend this program i welcome all of you to join this program we'll be happy to share the links with you later on uh you know uh and now i'd really like to jump on that you know uh, what we all have been going through in the last 21 days and what it really looks like now till possibly till the 3rd of may uh so you know uh, earlier it was different now uh, uh, what we are doing as entrepreneur as a community we are reaching out to all our clients we are talking to them i think uh, sitting in the confines of our home it's very important to connect with our people which is not just our clients but also our employees so every day we we try and have a you know call with uh most of our senior community try and tell them how we are coping up with this environment it's not possible that we might be able to help everyone and we have a solution for everyone but you know having a continuous dialogue i feel is very important with our employees and our consumers both uh, other things which we have been doing continuously from the last 20 21 days is that you know uh, we are doing a lot of virtual webinars every day Uh, i think in uh, in real community it's not possible to connect with thousands of people uh, literally every day uh, but we are launching we've launched a lot of uh, webinars yesterday i was doing one on food and beverage and a good thing about uh, while there are a lot of bads but a good thing about covid is that you know the world is becoming smaller so uh, you know i had panelists yesterday from uh, usa from south africa from hong kong uh you know when i do a on ground event sometimes it becomes very difficult to get all of them together at one place but now uh, because people are consuming content so much on their digital platforms that it's easier to bring them together i had about 500 plus restaurants joining this um, conversation with us uh, yesterday day before that we were doing one on education which is called edtech before that i've done one on startup i've done on entrepreneur so every day literally i'm speaking to 500 plus business owners who are telling us what they are actually facing what the world looks like and i i'll be very happy to share some polls we did during these interactions with them and uh, uh, you know and it's very very interesting you know we did a poll when we were doing a startup for consumer connect a webinar two days ago and uh, a while uh, we thought that you know some smes and startups would say that you know business will will close permanently but if you see the slide it says not even a single person said that businesses will co- close permanently so this is what audience are saying lies while we are, have a lot of speculation and we are thinking this will happen that will happen but i think all startups and smes are really building their time and you know thinking what else they can do with their business they are spending a lot of time in their own learnings this is another uh, poll we did on the same day when we when we talked about are you really facing financial uh, crisis another important one is that you know nobody said uh, while some said that we have uh, we are not able to pay our employees but most of them said 
that the most important critical question is that sales have decreased, but we are still trying to cope up with this environment. We are learning new things. We are establishing new things. We as a media company, we've been very hard into our on ground and print, but we are getting virtual into virtual webinars, digital. We are printing a lot of content related to entrepreneur and startups. Uh, you know, while uh, there are a lot of uh, lot of uh, established media companies like Economic Times, Your Story, and others which I follow religiously, but I'm very proud to say that we are one of the few organizations which has a very large business connect. So we are not just publishing story; we are talking about business, we are talking about impact, we are talking about startups. How can we save them? How can they survive? Uh, this is another poll which we conducted and while this is not relevant because now we are closed down till the 3rd of May, these are some of the stories uh, which we are continuously talking about on our platforms. Um, and you know, uh, the, uh, uh, this is my last slide and uh, the most important thing uh, I would say, uh, you know, and I would leave my thought with uh, that in these difficult times when we're sitting in our homes and while we are thinking a lot, uh, there's a very big risk of being misunderstood by our own employees and by our own clients. So what is very important for startups and SMEs is to communicate with all your clients continuously. And I would also request all the SMEs and startups, uh, you know, attending the seminar today, that please go ahead and extend uh, guidance and help to your client in whatever possible ways we can. Thank you, Rahul. So thank you very much, uh, Pitma. That was also quite insightful. Uh, so we've already exceeded by 10 minutes. Uh, you know, I just want to ask, uh, you know, maybe if we can take up questions um, offline, if you can, uh, you know, I, I understand there were some glitches in the beginning. Uh, you know, we, uh, we ran behind schedule, so the session uh, extended a bit uh, beyond our, uh, you know, beyond what was what we anticipated. But uh, be rest assured about it that we are completely committed. And, uh, you know, happy to address anything that you want to uh, ask. Uh, you can write to me. You can note down my email ID. It's rk uh, at unbrandasia.com. I take full responsibility. All the questions will be duly addressed uh, individually. So, and all the presentation decks that you asked for in the chat box uh, will be delivered to you in your inbox uh, very soon. Thank you very much uh, and you have a fantastic day. Uh, stay safe, stay at home uh, and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you so much we for joining up. us. Thank, Thank you. you.